Good afternoon. Today on Business Success in Six with Stacy, I have Dan Jacobs here, owner of Dan Dan and Esther Evan, a third ward in Milwaukee. Dan, thanks for jumping on. Thank you. So the purpose of this interview is to actually share what you're doing in business with our clients and community. And I would love for you to talk about both Dan Dan and Esther Evan. Are you okay with me asking you questions? Oh, for sure. No doubt. Awesome. Right on. First question is, when people ask you what your business does or businesses do, how do you describe it? I mean, it, 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 inherently, we're a restaurant. Like, uh, we're a restaurant and bar. Um, you know, we serve food. Uh, currently, after the, pan, after the pandemic or post-pandemic-ish, uh, we only do uh, dinner service. So Dan Dan's uh, open six days a week uh, from 5 to 9, uh, weekends 5 to 10. And then SREV is just open up on the weekends. Uh, we do three seatings, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, and 8 o'clock. But it's uh, it's very... Uh, very small. So it's a 20 seat little tiny restaurant that happens to be inside of Dan Dan. Um, so we do a little bit more elevated food out of Esther. Dan Dan's always, it, there's, it's always, it's always our heart and soul. Um, we love what we do here. Uh, but Esther Ev is really kind of, I guess, what feeds our creativity more than anything else. Um, Esther Ev was named after my great grandmother, Esther, and Dan's grandmother, Evelyn. These were the women that had cooked for our families when, um, as kids, and we wanted to uh, honor them by naming, you know, that restaurant and service after them. Uh, it's kind of like a no holds barred, like whatever we kind of feel like doing. Uh, Ten courses um, changes pretty frequently. We like to, we never change everything all at once, but we like to kind of rotate things in and out as it goes. Right now, I think the longest running dish that's on the menu is probably something from uh, mid-January, so. Oh, wow. Very unique. So you definitely do get to use your creativity. And I love the story about your grandparents or your grandmothers and the last name. That's beautiful. Yeah. very unique. So what were your business plans when you started and how have they changed? You know, it's funny is the idea that we had a business plan when, when we started. I always feel like I was, I, I've told other uh, people who are looking to open a restaurant and been like, oh, you know, how'd you guys know how to do this stuff or like what sort of grand plan we had. And in reality, I feel like we, we faked a lot of it. And so we kind of made it. Um, the amount of stuff that we didn't know about running a restaurant, even though we had worked in restaurants for 20 plus years, me and Dan, um, the amount of stuff that we didn't know was hilarious. Um, really? I didn't know that employers paid taxes. Like the first time we got a payroll, I got, you know, there was a there was a bill for or a, a deduction out of our checking account for like six thousand dollars, and I remember asking our you know our accountant like what you know what's going on, and he's like you pay employer taxes now, and I was like what's an employer tax? And they had to <laughs> the whole process of that, and I'd be like oh okay all right. Um, I really think you know when we opened up, I think we just you know we we wanted to. Uh, present something that was very unique to the to the city. And I think that we have succeeded in that. Um, I think you can, you know, Dan Dan, and I say this without any sort of like narcissism or hyperbole, but I, th I feel like we um, have done something that's completely unique to Milwaukee. And it's become like, a, you know, Dan Dan's like a Milwaukee institution. It's one of those places that people now, you know, when you see on lists or you come to visit Milwaukee, people are like, hey, go, you know, make sure you stop at Dan Dan. Um, you know, and me and Dan always wanted to, uh, make sure that we were taking care of our staff uh, maybe better than we were taken care of uh, mm -hmm. which were you know cooks coming up and so we've always kind of we've always kind of lived with that ethos of really trying to support our staffs um, really trying to keep our teams together like even throughout COVID man we were able to keep a lot of our core team together and it's it was it was really great watching people you know pull and I think as you get older you take more enjoyment out of seeing um seeing your, you know, seeing the people that worked underneath you go on to do bigger and better things. And I think that's always awesome. Um, as far as how things have changed, uh, I think we're, we're definitely, you know, finding uh, a niche and a need to be a little bit more active in our community um, to try and, uh, you know, we, we see things going on and we try and speak up about it. And I think it's, you know, just to be, you know, responsible owners. And again, just fostering that next generation of people that are, you know, going to take over the restaurant industry someday. Mm -hmm. That is very, very interesting. And you brought up community and getting more involved in the community just at the end there. My next question is actually, what is the biggest way that you impact the community? Obviously, you're giving really unique 
food. What else? What else? You know, I think during the pandemic, uh, we noticed, you know, a big hole, um, you know, showing showing like uh, our industry is fragile. Um, the restaurant industry and bars, uh, especially the independent owned ones, are it's a, a really fragile ecosystem. If one falls, I mean, it's it, it creates a whole domino effect of things that come down after that. Um, so uh, one of the things, you know, we did in early 2020 is we, just to just to get information in one place to be able to kind of like tell each other, because I mean, we, I found myself on couple of different text threads, you know, uh, a couple of different Instagram threads, Facebook Messenger, email threads, everybody asking like, what are we doing? Like, how's people, hand-? cause there wasn't a lot of really good information. And so sure. um, uh, me and a handful of people started Milwaukee's Independent Restaurant Coalition. And then through reaching out, um, trying to figure out, you know, what other people were doing, I became part of um, the Independent Restaurant Coalition nationally and was, wow. uh, was able to really kind of, uh, it, it was weird. It's, it's something that I never thought I would be want to be involved in was politics and talking to politicians. Uh, but it's something that I, I felt absolutely necessary. And I, I also found great enjoyment out of it, which was really weird and not expecting, not expecting to find that much enjoyment out of it. Um, but it was, I think that's, that's our biggest thing right now is just, you know, you know, you look at what's going on in our state, like we look what goes on in the state of Wisconsin, you know, we're coming up, uh, there's, a, there's a big, real big uh, vote next week um, on February 21st, I believe, I think that's Tuesday, mm-hmm. um, you know, and just how important your your voting voice is and what it means for the rest of the state. Like one of the things that I was just uh, in Madison on Monday talking with uh, my assembly person and state senator about the need for, um, expanding badger care um you know providing some sort of paid family leave um and uh you know access to capital for you know everybody you know for for everyone not just not just you know but for women for people of color like trying to like they, these are the hardest communities these are the communities that have the hardest time getting that that access to capital so Absolutely. You are so right about that. That's really, really important that you're an advocate for all of those. And so thank you for taking care of other restaurant bar owners as well, doing that. I feel like restaurant, as restaurant people, like we're so used to taking care of, of other people that we forget to take care of ourselves or each other. And I think that's one of the things that, you know, we really have to be a little bit more cognizant of um, realizing that, you know, our business uh, is important and, you know, we provide where a lot of times we're people's first and last jobs in the workplace, you know, and it's, um, it's, it's important what we do. We're, we're incredible revenue generators and engines of uh, tourism. You know, there's a reason why people come to places and, you know, it's, it's time to, it's time the government, uh, both federal and locally, you know, took note of that and, you know, helped us become a better industry. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing all that. My next question for you is, what is one challenge that you have faced as a business owner and that how other business owners could learn from that? I know you talked about badger care and health care. Is there anything you want to share about that? Other challenges as well? So during the pandemic, we moved to a service fee based system as opposed to a uh, tipping system. Mm-hmm. Tipping systems are um, inherently and uh, uh, archaic. They're, they're inherently racist and sexist and um, just archaic. Uh, the fact that somebody that you can get away with paying somebody $2.33 an hour is not a living wage. That's not a living wage. And, and making them do a song and dance so that somebody, you know, with somebody feels gratitude enough to give them money is also not a way that we should be doing business anymore. That's not, that's just shouldn't, shouldn't be how it's done. Um, during the pandemic, we realized uh, when we reopened that we were having a bit of trouble um, getting to that 20% and we instituted a 20% service charge. 100% of that 20% service charge goes to pay employee wages, um, also goes to pay health care. Um, we offer uh, health care to all full-time employees. We pay 50% of the premiums. Wow. Uh, 401k, we match up to 3% and uh, pay time off because we also think it's important for you to be out of the restaurant. We, uh, and have done this for a long time, uh, have been pretty strict about a four-day work week to allow for people to have a life. Uh, this industry is notorious for crushing crushing lives um and we always thought that it w- it was uh the the best thing you could do would be to you know give people the opportunity to take some time off 
and what we really what we've come to see is that a you know um, a rested happier worker is a better environment and they do better food we have better service you know yep. we are able to re retain better employees well and you know something that we talk about in the coaching world too is the leaders need, need to take care of the employees and the employees naturally, if they're taken care of, are going to take care of the clients and customers really well. So that's so great that you are taking care of them in that way. How was that, um, how was that received the service fee in, in your, your restaurant? It's been difficult. Uh, you know, it takes some explaining and I think that's really important. The messaging has to be clear, mm -hmm. uh, and has to be, um, it, it has to, it has to be consistent. Um, so, you know, we tell you right off the bat that, you know, as soon as you sit down, just so you know, there's a 20% service fee added to all guest checks, whether dine in or carry out mm -hmm. this service fee directly goes to paying our employees a living wage. And that's, that's the messaging that goes across every time. Um, we also pointed out, uh, at the end of the end of the night that there's a bill there like, Hey, we have added 20% service charge to this bill. But if you feel that the service went above and beyond, um that please feel free to leave additional tip on the tip line and that additional tip is actually split between the entire front of the house wow so unique so wonderful thank you for sharing that challenge and that 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 option that more restaurant owners could could uh... i think you're seeing i think you're seeing a move towards this i mean i think i think you know as more people realize just you know how detrimental to people's like mental health the the, the tipping system is i mean man the fact that you like like that you have to do a song and dance in front of somebody to basically get their charity is not fair to anyone. Um, it's just not, and it shouldn't be something that we're doing anymore. We're like we're 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 evolved. We it's okay to evolve all things. You know what I mean? It's like it's it's these things. Sure, it worked before, but it's you know like anything. I mean, cassette tapes were super cool when they first came out, but nobody's listening <laughs> to cassette tape anymore. Totally. Well, thank you for that. What does the future look like to you? And do you have an exit plan? <laughs> it's really funny. Uh, so Sandy D'Amato, uh, owner of uh, owner of Sanford, or former owner of Sanford, um, he said something to me when I was a young cook, is when his when his cook, when his book came out, his memoir came out. Uh, he said something to me. I was the I was a young chef. I was a chef at Wolf Peach at the time. I was like thirty two, and he said. Uh, he was like, you know, now that you have a restaurant, your next thing is how do I get out of this restaurant? Like, he's like, you, you got to eventually have some sort of exit plan. Um, you know, I'd like to say that we have some grand exit plan. We don't. We are, me and me and Dan both love what we do, even through all of the thick and thin of the pandemic and some real terrible times. I still love what I do. I love cooking. Like, I like coming in. I like I like talking to people. I like you know, I, I like welcoming people into our space. Um, it's fun. And I, as of right now, I don't. Um, if somebody was to offer me a, a boatload of money, anybody listening wants to offer me <laughs> back up the truck and dump a bunch of cash on me, I'm happy to sell you any ideas I have. Absolutely. But, <laughs> but it's as far as like looking at like what an exit plan looks like. I mean, I, I also have a uh, rare neurological condition uh, mm -hmm. called Kennedy's disease. It's similar to ALS. So my mobility is already affected um, from even when I was diagnosed, uh, you know, uh, seven years ago to what I, where I am now. Um, I have to start thinking a little bit as to how, what that looks like. And I think, you know, day in, day out cooking is probably not what I can do anymore. Also like cooking is in general, it's, this is a, this is a young man's game. This is like a, it's like a professional sport. Like you're at your peak at one point, but some point you're like Tom Brady and you're detrimental to everybody else around you. Like you're breaking down. So like you have to, I think you, it, everybody kind of goes through this and it, you have to realize your own limitations. And I think that's where like mentoring and coaching really comes in mm -hmm. uh, and, and being able to build up that team around you. And, and, you know, it, it, I can't, I can't say enough, man. It takes a village to get what we do done. Um, and we would be nowhere without the support staff that we have. Wow. Absolutely. Well, I'm sorry to hear about that mobility um, disease, but it sounds like you're doing great things and you have a boatload of knowledge that you're going to be able to pass on to people and coach and mentor. So say, thank you for all of that. And besides that, if you love what you do, keep doing it, right? All yeah, right. Absolutely. My final question, all subjects open. What inspires you most? Uh, I really think this goes back 
uh, this really goes back to uh, our, our team. And I think it's, you know, seeing, seeing, seeing people move on to, to new places and seeing how those places, you know, I, we have, uh, I'm not, we have a rest, there's a restaurant in town. Uh, it's had a, a couple of our employees come out, like move over to them. Okay. And, um, you know, the, the chef from that restaurant uh, came to me and Dan and uh, just said, he's like, you know, you guys are putting out some of the best cooks in the city. And I think that's always been something that I can really hang my hand on and, and totally inspires me to keep, you know, doing that. I, I had chefs that did this for me. There was, I had a couple of chefs that were real true mentors and I, I, I hope to be that to somebody else someday. I hope somebody else is having the same conversation with someone like you and someday is like, man, Dan Jacobs, that guy inspired me or helped me blah, blah, blah. In the same way that I had chefs do that for me. So that is so cool. Yeah. We have to pay it forward. Thank you so much for your time today, Dan. Now, if somebody wants to go to the restaurants, what is the best way for them to do so? So we, we use talk. So explore, explore talk.com. Um, Estreb is reservation only Friday and Saturdays, and they do book up pretty quickly. Okay. Uh, we are fully booked. I, I know the next two weeks, um, uh, of, uh, February and, and early March, but, uh, feel free to, you know, just check in on talk. We open up, uh, reservation six weeks in advance, uh, Dan, Dan, six days a week. Uh, we accept walk-ins, come on in. Um, if we don't have a spot for you at a table, we definitely have spots at the bar, fun environment, super, super good times. Perfect. I can't wait to get there. Thank you so much for your time today, Dan. Awesome. Thank you. My pleasure.